Hello, my friends. This is Thank You Half Hour. Welcome. I'm your host, Tom Christopher Warren. And today I have as my guest one of my very favorite human beings walking the earth. And I say that with absolutely zero exaggeration, no hyperbole, best humans (laughs) ever to exist. Singer, dancer, actor, director, creator, choreographer, uh, just magical human, Kenny Ingram. Thank you for being here with me. Absolutely. I am honored to be here. Thank you so much, dear friend, for reaching out. You know how much I love you. I'm so excited about your podcast. (laughs) Congratulations, dear friend. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, you know, I figured I'm of a certain age and my friends all have these great stories. And, you know, we sat, Kenny and I sat next to each other in the Lion King dressing room for many years and we've heard and shared so many stories. And I thought, you know, I'd like to share those stories with a, a wide audience. And so my fives of listeners will be thrilled to hear your tales of the business. I was telling uh, my students recently, we were talking about, I I often use you as an illustration of someone who can single-handedly change the temperature of a room. And the illustration I use is our men's ensemble dressing room before you joined the show was a little toxic at that point. It was a little, there the, were the sort of dark days. And, you know, the building of a long running show ebbs and flows. Sometimes it's happy, sometimes not. And Kenny joined the show in whatever year that was, and everything shifted. Everything in the building shifted because you bring light and joy to anything you touch, and there's no denying it. There's no fighting it. There's no, you, you leave no room for or space for fighting that positive joy. And so everyone just follow suit. And you are the best example of leading by example that I can possibly think of. Oh, Tom, thank you. You're so sweet. Um, Well, first of all, I just want to say I was put in a show with you when I came back. You were the residential director yeah. when I went back on tour. Yeah. And you put me back in the show. You did such a marvelous job with that. And I just fell in love with you. I went to Broadway 2008. And I kind of felt the energy when we were in that room. And um, I don't know, it's like, I just I just wanna have a good time, you know what <laughs> I mean? And I want the room to have a good time. And, yeah. you know, we're just, and I know it's gonna sound a little corny, but I, I'm so proud to be be a part of this, of, a, of just a small little part of the Lion King. I mean, yeah. I'm such a small little part because the fabrication, that Miss Tamor did with that. And, you know, you really don't appreciate it until you're really gone from the show. Yeah. I think when you yeah. really go back and you're like, wow, I was a part of this amazing piece of musical theater, you know? It's humbling, and, um, right? It's very humbling. Yeah. And I felt that even when I was in that room and I would, you know, whatever, make apple cider or <laughs> bring some donuts into the room or just to bring a different energy, a different smell, aromatherapy, just something because, you know, it's a tough show, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, um, but with that toughness of that show, there's also a lot of love in that show. The music. I mean, I was in the show 15 years. Yeah. It's remarkable. 15 years. That's a long time. Yeah. And I never wanted to leave that show because of the people. The people were great people. Yep, yep. Um, music, the friendships. We've gone through so much with these people from, you know, marriages to Lion King babies being born. And yes, deaths, loss of parents, right, right? Loss of parents, loss of loss of people in the room. You know, so it it's it's and I, I the only thing I can maybe think of is maybe Wicked might have that same thing because it's been around for so long, right. you know. Um, but that's another thing is that you know we're we're closed up in this dressing room, you know, twelve days a week, <laughs> and, and it's literally like you're in a school because when you're not. <laughs> In the dressing room, you're at a rehearsal. When you're not in rehearsal, yeah. you're on the stage. You're not in the stage. You're on a costume fitting. You're not in a costume fitting. You're at an event. So you're always in this bubble. I literally lived in that bubble. I don't know. I don't know anything would ever happen outside that bubble. We did. You were good about getting out of that bubble, though, just to go and touch base with new energy outside of that 
fear. Well, you and know, she had to fear. she had to have a side hustle too. And I was trying to get my college degree. But you know, we in that dressing room lived through two Obama elections. We lived through a subsequent election, right? On Times Square, you know, we're right there with a window onto the world view, right into Times Square. A bomb threat was right below us. We navigated life events and world events as a a unit. And, you know, yes, Wicked Ah. absolutely has that. I think Mormon has elements of that. But something that's completely unique to Lion King is the South African component. You have these, these artists that are you know, not from America who have come here to share their gifts and their voices and their points of view and their politics and their intelligence. And that's just unique. That's singular. That doesn't exist. It was beautiful. I learned so much from my South African brothers and sisters. Like I really tuned in and I covered them. Yeah. You know, I covered Antelope. So I wanted to be, I want to honor that. I wanted to honor that. And I'll never forget the best compliment I ever got from Bongi was when he came and saw uh, our tour on in San Diego. And he was like, I thought you were so <laughs> That's the best compliment like, you can get. Like, Thank you so much. That means so much to me. <laughs> you know, I mean, because that's the way how I wanted to approach every character. Well, you know, I covered like, I don't know how many people in that show. 11, I, I, I mean, never right. tried to count. But, you know, everything that I did, with, with, whether it be Bonsai or Ed or, you know, a South Antelope, of, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, an, an antelope yep. of South African ensemble track that I had to learn Zulu to really enunciate Correct. and that energy going, you know what I mean? And also the five African-American men that I had to cover. Yeah. And also I had to cover those little bits and parts of, you know, the vulture flying across or, you know, those little dance specialties. You know, it's funny. Um, you said but- you you referenced being a tiny part of Lion King and I get it. We are both little teeny bitty cogs, but all simultaneously, we're the ones who keep it, we're, we're the life force of it. The, the company that makes that happen night after night after night, the actors, the musicians, the stage crew, the, Absolutely. Those are the people who are the lifeblood of the 26, seven years of its existence. Yeah. Um, not yeah. to dishonor Julie's, you know, the original team's vision in the yeah. least, remarkable. But what keeps no. it going day to day is the people in that building, in each of the Absolutely. Companies. Absolutely. Because we showed up. And another thing yeah. that's so interesting is that, you know, we were there at a time where Times Square was really at its best. <laughs> it really was. I mean- I mean, it really, <laughs> truly was. I mean, yeah. I mean, like, like 2007 to 2018, it was like, oof, yep. it was fabulous. Um, and it couldn't have been in a better time to be in New York City. You know, it was just, you know, it was just very magical around there. It was really a true blessing. Um, well, and yeah. you have so much context too, because you're not a New Yorker. But you know, you're not a born New Yorker. You're a Chicago boy, so you come no, into Broadway, I'm a California, California. Boy. But then you li- you worked in Chicago for so long. You were such a state. I lived in Chicago for like 25 years, but yeah. I lived in. I just keep going. You know, you east. came to New York as so, a fully grown human being. Oh yeah, yeah. I was like, I can't remember how old I was. Well, <laughs> you're only 38 now, so <laughs> you were very <laughs> young. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Yeah, I mean, I lived in Chicago for 25 years and had a full-fledged career. Yeah. And so I, I went out to Chicago, you know, a year after I got out of high school, you know, and wow. I went there with a show. It was Great America, Marriott's Great America theme park. Yep. You know, and it's so funny. We did, I played Little Richard. I sang Tutti Frutti, you know, <laughs> five shows a day, preset my own costumes. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> and I loved it. You know, it was because it gave me, it built stamina in me. It taught me discipline. And then I stayed in Chicago because I, I just felt like I wasn't ready to come to New York yet. Okay. It was it was only 19. It was still the AIDS thing was right. really big. And I was, I was a very gullible and vulnerable young kid. I, I was kind of like, huh? Kind of naive, very California, you know? Well, and that's being a kid. Um. So, you know, but but I, I I'm I'm really happy that the path that I chose because I was on a Hubbard Street Dance Company and I, I was on scholarship there for a whole year. 
Wow. I didn't go to college. I didn't, I did it the old school way. You know, I- University I of life. Tap, tap, you know, musical theater, you know, cleaning the bathrooms, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, and then I, that was over for a year. Then I auditioned and I got my equity card. I'm I was the I was the first Richie after the Broadway company in a regional theater. Were you really so, in a chorus line? Yeah, Where yeah. Were you I really? Moved, and you learned it was the at show Mary Lincoln Fire no. Theater, in Chicago. Did you they did the very first production of a chorus line outside of Broadway? Did you learn the show from Bayork or from Mitzi? Okay, so that's kind of funny. So. <laughs> I learned the show. Okay, there's so much because <laughs> look, I sat in at 890 with Michael Bennett in the room. That's Did you how really? far that's how far back I go. Yeah. How I how saw him. wait? I, I, this is this is what happened. I, right. So <laughs> what happened was 1985. 85, I did a chorus line at the Marriott Lincolnshire Theater. Candace Tovar. Candace Tovar, Fosse dancer, uh -huh. was also a Michael Bennett dancer, did Cassie, da da da. She staged it. I came to New York, auditioned for a chorus line for Bayork, got it. No, it was before, you know what? It was before that, because I was still not in equity. Oh so God. it was before I did Marriott. And I got the Israeli company. I got that in Israeli company. And Bayork is such a sweet, I just thanked her. You no, know, today's her birthday. I just oh, I thanked her and love her. And because she would take me out to these, the, the, like the China Ballet and, all the, the, you know, all, all these things here in New York while I slept on somebody's couch. And <laughs> at the men's golf where we did Lion King upstairs was the men's golf studios, yes. which looked over to Red Alley. Yep. So she would have a rehearsal day. And then I shouldn't probably say this, but you know, the, the non-equity people would come in because we were all non-equity sure. and she would teach us the show. So she taught us the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's how I learned the show. Then I got Bob Fosse's dancing and I couldn't do a chorus line and I went out on tour with Bob Fosse's dancing. So that's kind of how I learned, you know? Um, but I was just so, I think, you know, you probably were too. I was just eager. I was yeah. eager to be around all of these people. I was eager to, 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 because I, you know, I wanted to learn the vocabulary. I wanted to learn that I, I wanted to learn the texture. I wanted to, you know, I saw Donna McKechnie rehearse. I saw, you know, Michael Bennett in the room sitting there saying, Oh, you don't have to do the dance goes, but I want to do it. I want to do it. I was like, wow. You know, Listen, some people learn from reading a textbook, some people learn from listening to a lecture, and some of us learn from keeping our eyes and our ears open and our mouth shut and just watching and soaking up the directors, the choreographers, the music directors, the fellow actors. No better way to learn, that, I think. That that third one I did a lot. I did that with Cherry Jones when I worked with Cherry Jones. When I did um, Good Person of Szechuan at the Goodman, oh, and God. I would do my scenes with her, and I would come off stage, put my prop down, turn around, and sit in that <laughs> stage on that wing and just watch. Because <laughs> it was a master class. And I also did that with Mr. Prince. Yeah. I, I did it with Hal Showboat. Prince because I was assistant regional director. So I would sit there with him and Ruth Mitchell, and I would just be like, and he, it was, it was, you know, Kevin Gray, he, Mark Jacoby, Gay Willis, Dorothy Loudon, John McMartin, you know, I mean, these are the oh people. God. Right, I'm right. Honestly, I mean, I, and I was just a sponge. I would just sit there and watch Dorothy Loudon, like. A comedy masterclass. A comedy masterclass. And I think, you know, from where, I mean, I, I'm just talking about me, but that third one, I did a lot. I yeah. just. <laughs> and just watch because when you just and watch, there's so much that you can take in. It's like being at a tap dance audition. It's like everybody's trying to tap and do everything, and, and the teachers in the front or the choreographers in the front, and they're watching it. Sometimes you just stop <laughs> and literally squat and just stay still and watch their feet. You will pick up that combination. I guarantee you. Yeah. You will pick that combination. There's something about being still. You know? Not a lot of people something. recognize the power of stillness. And I actually talk about this a lot with my song interpretation students because they they though don't trust stillness. And, you know, the older I get, the more I enjoy it, frankly. And the more I gain from the art of being still and listening and 
recalibrating myself with the universe. That sounds so hippy dippy, but you know what I mean. Just sort of. But it's but it's also allows you to breathe. Yeah. It allows the audience to breathe. It allows you to take them in and to take you in. Yeah. And it allows you to just. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that, right? I do. You don't have to be like like ba 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 ba. You know, like all the time, right? I mean, so yeah. I mean, it's it's quite remarkable. It's really, really remarkable. Um, just sitting here and talking about the things that I remember and who I've learned from. And that's just a very small, that's a very small scope because, you know, I've, you know, I've worked with so many, you know, Frank Galati was another person that was just, he was, I mean, Frank Galati made like postcard pictures. Magnificent pictures on stage. Yeah. I, I was so blessed. I mean, I was so blessed to work with him in, Every man, you know, a, a good person of Szechuan. Yep. Which I first, he cast me in a show. I was a dancer, and he cast me to like do lines and speak and have a role a, at the Goodman. Jerry Jones. I was just like, right. I beat out E. Faye Butler and Hollis Resnick and Shannon Cochran. I'm just kidding, That's, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, incredible, incredible. But yeah, so I mean, but you know, uh, it's he. He was, a, and then Ragtime. I did Ragtime for for, for Frank. You know, and um, again, just. Did you have a chance to see Ragtime before the Chicago Company? <clears throat> I did not. I'm going to tell you. I never saw any of these shows before really? the Chicago Company. You're just and even like, I mean, even like Lion King and, you know, <laughs> one of my directors said, good, I'm glad you didn't see it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not naming names. <laughs> but <laughs> No, I'm going to tell like, you that seeing Ragtime, that original production was like seeing God. It, it was that opening number is to date one of the most thrilling pieces of stage imagery I've ever seen. That score is yeah. unparalleled. That cast yeah. was at the top of their game and ah. and young at the time, but already like in peak form. Stokes, Marin, Audra, like all of them just masterclasses. Just amazing. I'm actually going <clears throat> tomorrow night to go see one of the babies that was in Ragtime when I did it, Andrew. No. Andrew Keenan Bolger. Oh, right. He was one of your little Edgars. He he was the little boy. Yeah. He was the young, he was the young, the young kid yeah. in the show. So I'm gonna go see him tomorrow. I'm, i hope he remembers me. He's doing Dracula comedy. I know he is. That looks great. There it is. And it's really fun. You know, and and he's he was always. He's such a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. He was always brilliant, brilliant, you little young actor. Well, the so whole family, brilliant. his sisters are brilliant. Yes. You know, that whole family oh, is just yes. ridiculous. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I'm excited. I hope, you know, I hope I can see him. I'm, I'm, we'd really like to just say, hey, you know. Oh, I'm you know. sure he remembers you. I'm going to tell one, I have several fabulous Kenny Ingram stories, some of which I can't tell on a podcast, but one of which I can. <laughs> and this <laughs> one, but one of them. Is this says, is change the channel? Change. <laughs> that will always be my favorite. But uh, oh, no, I remember when um, you we were in the show together. So this was this must have been in New York, and the oh. mole was still the puppet was still a part of the show. So before we put in the cuts, and the mole had one line, and it was in your German dialect, Zazu, news from the underground. That's all you had to do. You had to stick a puppet up, you know, a stick up through a hole in the stage and say that line. And Kenny says to me, "Uh, honey, I I think Gwen Verdon is going to be the mole today. (laughs) And I was on for Zazu and I get out there (laughs) and I, the mole puppet comes up and I hear Zazu, news from the underground. And... (laughs) Uh, again, I saw the face of God. Like that was oh. so magnificent. The way you balance having a good time and one of the most extraordinary work <laughs> ethics I've ever experienced, because that could be a tightrope. And you are the greatest, my friend. Do you remember that? Do you remember doing that? Yes, I do. <laughs> I do remember that now that you brought that up. I do remember that. Tell yeah, me that about was Show number 11. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the 15th show of the so, week. My apologies. But yeah, I do remember <laughs> that. And, you know, it's, um, that was really a fun part of that show, that, that little pop-up. Yeah. Little, uh, 
really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I do remember that. But those are things that like get us through, right? Oh, I mean, the- as long as we don't go cuckoo crazy, crazy for coconuts. Right. And sometimes <laughs> that happens and then you rein it back in. Somebody's usually there to say, yeah. okay, kids, we need to get back yeah. to the show. And we do, you know. But yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I want to hear about That's- triple threat. Tell me about Triple Threat. You you left Lion King a number of years ago, and your career has exploded. You've choreographed, you've directed, and now this off-Broadway hit with James T. Lane. Talk about Triple Threat. Well, you know, first of all, I am grateful to James T. Lane for even, you know, ringing my phone. <laughs> um, you know, I when I look at this young man, I, I see myself. It's yeah. really funny. Yeah. You know, like I look on the stage, I'm like, wow, that looks like me when I was, you know. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's just, uh, we, we we started chatting during the pandemic, you know, and he wanted, he, he actually, it was a little bit before the pandemic, actually. And he was in Chicago and he was doing Bert and Mary Poppins and he had written this little script and, you know, he was like, hey, can you read it? And, and he like, I read it. And then he's like, hey, I'm going to videotape it, invite a couple of people over. Nobody came, but he <laughs> still did it yeah. for himself with a video camera in front of him because that's James T. Lane, wow. you know? I mean, he's like, and I love it, you know? Um, <clears throat> and I watched it and I'm like, okay. So we started during the pandemic working on 72nd Street down at Ripley, you know, every day. Wow. And, um, it's, you know, it's a, I'm just so proud of him because he's able to tell his truth of where he's been, you know, in his life. Yeah. And you're going to be entertained and, um, you know, it, it'll, it'll, it'll resurface again, you know, so people will get a chance to, to see it. But I'm just really happy that I had the opportunity to, I mean, just be honest yeah. You know, it was just such an honest, beautiful s- play. You know, we did it in Virginia first. Um, and then <coughs> we did some readings of it. And then we did it off Broadway. <laughs> so how remarkable is that? We did it in you know, a reading. We did it crazy. out of town. And then we did it off Broadway. That's It was crazy and such a whirlwind. And I just so proud of like i'm really really proud of the show you know and you know this this little image back here yeah you know they you know we um we have a lot we had a lot of images we had this we had that and i was like yep. uh-uh. no we're gonna go that <laughs> just remarkable right because it's a little thing like oh i gotta you know it's like what? it's very compelling because he's like me he's every he's always like this mm. you know i said no this is this is a little, this is out there. That's this the play. Is, this, yeah, this is the play. So um, it's just very, it's been, it's been really cool, you know, and, you know, before that I did Emoji Land and I choreographed that at the Duke and that was, also that was great Broadway, work. Yep. You know, oh my gosh, all these Broadway folks working with them off Broadway and getting to know like Lucas Steele and Georgia Boot and, you know, Leslie Margarita and, <sighs> and, you know. And, Harada, was I mean, Harada in that? Oh yeah. yeah, I yeah. actually, I actually was doing a reading, and she was in the audience for Corner Bittersweet. Um, uh, it's a play that Lainey Sakakura wrote. Mm. Um, well, she like directed and choreographed it. Yeah, and um, Jamie Ford, he, he wrote the book. Okay, he wrote the novel. I believe that's his name. Anyway, she was at this reading, and I was like, I wonder if she did this reading. <laughs> So I really don't, I don't know. I was like, hi, how are you? I'm about to choreograph this show. Would you like be interested in doing it? She was like, oh, okay, great. You know, but let me, you know. So I don't know. They called her and she ended up doing it. And she was a blast to work with. Love that. And she worked with Frank Galati. We had Frank Galati stories to, to share. Because she did physical, you know? Right. So yeah, yeah. I was like, small world, right? You know? But it was, it was such a, that was a great experience. That was a lot of fun. And Tom Caruso, do you, do you know Tom, Thomas Caruso? Thomas Caruso was great. He's a good, he, he's actually under, um, um, how Prince's wing. Oh, wing. wing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy, right? It's just like, 
it, the people that you power. learn from, I, you touched on this, but the, the, the folks, we're of an age where we've been able to watch people above us, you know, um, uh, do practice their craft at a time yeah. in a golden age moment. You know yeah. what I mean? We were able to watch folks at the end of that golden age, at the top of their craft and yes. learn from them. And, yes. you know, I don't know who the, the kids are watching today. I don't know who they consider to be their Bayork Lees, their, their, you know, Michael Bennett's, their Hal Prince's. I don't, um, and we have remarkable young artists right now, I but don't, I, I don't either. I don't either. Like I have no idea. And if they have any access to yeah. them. It's funny they have you know access I mean? to everything but it, nothing <laughs> right i mean at least we could get some kind of a you know access to these people yeah you know it was being in front of them at an audition mm -hmm. i feel like back then they were around more at auditions right like now i feel like there's such a ladder to get to the actual director sure sure you know and that's just from you know, from what I've I've seen, yeah, you know, um, and another one who was great to work with was Susan Strollman. Oh. She's taught me a lot. Stroll, Stro was, she was amazing. I mean, I learned a lot from her too, just by watching how she ran it and how um, organized, hmm. just how and how brilliant, just brilliant. I, I had a work session with her. I've spent a total of 20 minutes with her, I suppose, uh, back when they did the frogs at Lincoln Center. And they brought me in and I wound up getting a work session with her. And she was, in, in that 20 minutes, I learned more about storytelling and narrative and brevity and lean. Oh it was just fabulous. Storytelling. Yeah. That's why I was, I was so grateful to be a dance captain for her, you know, because I learned... I learned that. Was like, that it showboat? Was just so ridiculous. Yeah. And yeah. then they moved me up to assistant residential director, and I ended up setting a couple of companies for them. And how many live people? Live in that? Right. Live, live in. event. How many people in that cast of showboat? How many actors? 75. 75. Never 75. today will you see that. Never will you see that. But the sound <laughs> on that stage was absolutely <laughs> incredible. Incredible. I mean, I, I mean it, it. It's one of my favorite overtures ever. First chord and I mean, I but that first chord, I would go out in the house every night just to listen to that overture. Yes, yes. And again, people at the top of their game. It's a great. It's a, there are some great. What are some of your fun overtures? Because I've, I've got my like, favorite overtures are. In, not in order necessarily, but Candide, yeah. Gypsy, Funny Girl, yes. um, Nine, the sung overture of Nine that the the ladies sing. Uh, uh, those are those are my tops. Oh, that's funny. I'm getting ready to direct and choreograph Funny Girl. Are you where? Um, at Main State Music Theater. Oh, fantastic! So I'd love to work there. They're lovely. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, yeah. sponsor me. Yeah, oh, okay. I, that's interesting that they got the rights to that with the tour going out. Yeah, we're doing it right afterwards. Fantastic. First, like, do you have a star for Fanny? Not yet. We're still looking. Okay. Still good, good. open. All so, right. send me some folks. You know, but I'm really excited, and it. You know, I I've been doing a lot of homework, and. Barbara Streisand, I'm telling you, honey. <laughs> they don't make them like that. I mean, she went through it. Did yeah. you know about that? Yeah. She went through it during that production when she should have been having the time of her life. And That's she right. was you know, being messed with on stage. You and know, she, and she talked very honestly about that. In her book. But yeah. the first time I ever heard, I've never heard anything about that, you know, which kind of messed up her, I mean, which is easy to do. Sure. Sure. I mean, let's. Face it, she's fine. She she fared well afterwards, but you're right. Yeah, she has herself a fairly just, decent. You know, I think I think where that leads to is just um, you know, again, backing up to your first question, 
right? The joy that I try to bring into the room. That's why, you know, because everyone should be having a joyful time at work. We're doing what we love to do, right? Or so we want to, right? Yeah. It's passion. It's what we love to do. So why can't that also be on the stage, but also be backstage? Absolutely. In the dressing rooms, when you're going up the elevator, when you're warming up for a show, after the show, (coughs) you know, to bring some type of joy. I mean, I remember doing I'll Give It Five, you know, just to have my book face slide yeah. book thing for the next for the next like you know for the what was it the last <coughs> five minutes of that hour yeah. just to get everybody's energy up you know and then that's what it kind of did in this really weird way not weird it made perfect sense it it yeah. recalibrated everybody let's do a show we get to do this let's do, a thing show. Yeah. do you remember of course you do but share with my listeners uh what did everyone call you in the building <laughs> what happened no, auntie. Everyone to a person referred to Kenny as auntie. And yes, they, you know, dancers, like, what? crew guys, because so you cute. cared for us as a company like the favorite aunt in, yeah. a, in a large family. I love y'all like my babies. Absolutely. You know what I mean? and, that's, and, that's, and that's what it was. You know, I mean, that's, that's what it was. And that's what it is. And that's what it will always be, right? Yeah. Because, um, <clears throat> you know, Again, it's such a, it's a hard show. <laughs> and I love checking in with the dancers, the singers, principals. The kids, yep. And go, the kids go, how are you? Like, how, how are you? Because you just get in this like thing. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And uh, you just kind of just going through it like a robot. And I think it's good to just kind of go. Or when I just started the Disney Cousins. Yes, you, know, you I, started I, that. And did the potluck. And I was like, look, I called the office and I said, you know, I think it was Newsies and I think Little Mermaid, Mermaid was Lion King, Mary Poppins. And, I'm like, and we had this beautiful lobby. And I'm going, why can't we do a potluck? We're with, we just are all under Disney, all under Disney in this. And it was phenomenal. It was, it was so fantastic. And now I think they're still kind of doing it, but I think they are. That first one was amazing. Yeah. I remember there was it. some beautiful folks in that lobby. <laughs> oh, we got pictures on the staircase. It was, it was fabulous. And the food. The food we used to pre-pandemic, we did some pretty fucking delicious potlucks yeah, we in did. that lobby. We really did. Chili really cook-offs did. and and top oh. chef contests. And yeah, we 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 love to eat. We love to we never, enjoy each other's company. Did, well, I think they did a project runway there, didn't they? Just I know they did on the road. On the road, I, think they, I feel like there were like toilet paper project runway. You know, make costumes. You're going to mission and you try to make costumes. <laughs> <laughs> outfits, you're going to mission. I, I, oh. yeah, I seem to recall Dennis Johnson, like putting together all his, like <laughs> so much fun. We had a lot of laughs. My friend, I'm at half hour. I'm, I'm a little past half hour, so I've got to let oh. you go. But what a joy it is to see your face, to hear your voice. To feel thank your you, energy, so I miss it like I miss a limb, honestly. Thank and I you. love you. Thank you so much. And come and see Main State Music Theater, Funny Girl. Absolutely. I right. absolutely will. I love you, my friend. Love you too. Bye. Bye. All right, that's a half hour. Thank you, half hour. Land Media. Think big.